Hello, hello everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me as always is Zeke Baker and together we make the Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. Zeke, you got a crazy mustache going on. Say hello to the folks. Hello, hello. What, how come you decided to look like Chester? <laughs> I mean, if you really want this tangent, it does take up about a 90 seconds probably, but... I, I'll give you 59. All right. So my theory is all these folks are bringing back 80s attire. You see all these women wearing women's 80s style cut jeans. I'm like, all right, the trend's coming back. So I'm going for, you know, halfway froed out puffy hair and a mustache. That's what all the guys look back then. I figured I'm just ahead of the curve. You're talking about 80s style, but you look like 70s style. Nah, I wouldn't go that far. I go. You have a fro with a porn stash. Hey, if it gets it done. <laughs> Well, we are joined by an amazing group of guys tonight. We have our friends from the Firewater Review. We have Seth Brown. We have Aaron Cave. We have Jeremy Cave. I, you guys went and picked a barrel of MB Rowland today. You're in town in Nashville. We've gone on your show. It's only right that you come on our show. Thank you very, very much for being here. All I have to say is it's about time. I know. Yes, it's, it's about time. <laughs> well, I mean, it's about time. Well, for, for, for two things: for for us to be on a show somewhere and actually in front of a microphone, and to be on your show, and for you to actually meet Aaron in person. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because a, yeah. a lot of people might not know that you guys have known each other for how long, and you're just meeting in person. We were thinking five, yesterday it was close to five, five years, six years, maybe, yeah, a little over, <laughs> a little over, yeah. And it's a digital love fest. Yes. Now, your last podcast was in February. Of 2012. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say 11. So I guess that's a little bit better. But uh, it, your last podcast was in February. I uh, looked before you came up. But, um, February 9th, I think. Was it's it? a, I don't know, but you've been living here since then, right? Yeah. In the Just, attic. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it was Tim Squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the that bachelor were... party kept telling you. There was this noise in the attic. I tell you. There were noises that kept happening while we were recording here for the past like six months. Well, we, we were, we were down were. here, but every time we would see or hear Zeke pull up in his white van with a teardrop on the back, <laughs> we would run to the attic and, you know, we'd have to be quiet. I keep waiting for Zeke. Like, when he came in tonight, I was waiting for him to be like, I heard you all had a fire that needed to be put out. <laughs> I'm here to fix the cable. Yeah. It's always the cable. Yeah. It's, but Jeremy, thank you for coming too, because I know you are a driving force. You and your brother pick a lot of barrels together. You're very involved in, in the bourbon community. You don't always get the spotlight because he has the podcast, but thank you very much, much for being <laughs> Wait, who has a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do. That's yeah. right. I do that. appreciate that you guys let me tag along with the, uh, the podcast and the pick today, so I am very appreciative to be here. I know, we, we're happy to have you, I'm, and I'm just thanking you for them you guys he's thanking you yeah oh so, thanks yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. We're glad you i included the, the pick and the podcast yeah. it just that felt natural to have him here because he's yeah. that we, every pick i've been on jeremy's been on with me so i have a similar palate to seth and i feel like you know me and my brother have been drinking bourbon for a long time and our palates are really similar so it's it's always good to have a uh, someone to help even when you're thinking well is this one good is this, is this really what I want to pick and you know just to have that extra support you know it's always good now one thing I find interesting and I always tell people this is people would consider our podcast to be a little more bourbon heavy a little more notes heavy and you know they'll tell us that we get all these tasting notes and all that stuff and I'm like Zeke and I are talking about kudzu syrup and something like that <laughs> I mean if you really want to listen to people that are going to pick out all of those tasting notes I always tell them to listen to the Firewater Review, and I'm like, when Zeke and I are on the Firewater Review, we're like, yeah, it burns. Uh, <laughs> the who, who invited, who invited the two bumpkins? I think there's a little sweetness in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it it's tastes smooth. smooth. Yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, I was talking to a uh, conversation with Facebook on somebody and I'm not going to be that guy who name drops but I, I had mentioned something and he goes smooth isn't a tasting note <laughs> and I was like oh damn <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
bastard. I have to draw through these lines. I've got down here. A lot of X's coming up. And but if you're not watching, Zeke has just crossed out all of his notes. <laughs> on a scale of not smooth to smooth, where do you rank this? <laughs> how how wry do you think this is? Yeah. <laughs> but it's one of those things where I, I think for those of us, I mean, not only do I consider you guys to be friends, but I'm a fan of what you're doing. I think Zeke would say the same thing or a fan of what you've done and what you're going to then do again. I was going to say, we haven't, yeah. we're not doing anything <laughs> yeah. right now. <laughs> but a fan of what you guys have done before and, and what you will be doing again. Um, but I always learned something listening to you guys and there's always a tasting there. I mean, your palates, you guys have worked hard on them from tasting a lot to get notes. I mean, even we will be tasting the Weller line, including CYPB tonight. And you guys are picking up on things that you're like, ah, I got a little cherry on that. And I got this and I got that. And I don't want to bury the lead or, or give away the lead, but I always learn something talking to you guys. So how did you get to that point? I mean, is it just a crap ton of tasting or? Well, I mean, they got, they got meetings for people like us. <laughs> <laughs> um, AA? Yeah, well, yeah. If you look at the table right now, yeah. it should be AA. Yeah. So <laughs> now it's uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of a lot of practice, I, and I say practice, but you know, it, it's taken a long time to develop that palate, and it's you know, I always say, you know, I I do like the higher proof bourbons, and it it, it took me a long time to get into higher proof bourbons. Bef- you know, when I, I remember my first bottle of Booker's, I did not like, and it took me. It took me a long time to, you know, develop the palate and, you know, the nose. And it just, it takes a while. It takes repetition. You know, you, you think it might be funny, but, you know, you, you sneak into that spice cabinet and you smell stuff, you taste stuff, and and you drink a glass of bourbon and you, you start picking up on it. So does the wife ever catch you just smelling some spices? No, I do it when she goes to bed because I don't mess with the baking spices because she bakes. So you mess with those bacon spices, you're in trouble. It's yeah. a lot different than what Zeke gets caught doing when his wife goes to bed. <laughs> I tried to get a comeback. And nothing, was, nothing was coming out. I went, I'm dead here. <laughs> This is too good. We missed it. <laughs> yeah. So it's my throw on the life preserver. Yeah. <laughs> Kids drowning. So, Seth, uh, you were going to say something. Seth, you were going to say something. I don't think I can now, especially with a straight face. No, Aaron's right. I mean, you you just taste a lot of stuff. What I what I always go back to is just experiences that you've had in your life. Um, Zeke, I know when when you guys, you and John, have been on the show a couple times, you. You'll reference environments that you're in, you know, if it's a, a field or a forest or, you know, whatever. There's times when I'm, I'm splitting hickory or oak uh, to fire up the, the barbecue pit. You know, it's, it's fresh oak that I, that I haven't really aged as long, or it's, it's oak that I've had sitting under the porch for a while that's had, had time to, to kind of dry out a little bit. It's stuff like that, you know, playing baseball through high school and college. Restringing baseball gloves, holding leather in your mouth, you get that taste of leather in it, and that that honestly was the first the first flavor note that I ever picked up on any bourbon was leather, <laughs> and that was the 2014 Four Roses Limited Edition Single Barrel, and I mean it just jumped out. The finish was just big leather, big tobacco. Being in baseball, those are two things that you're around all the time, and. You just build on those those flavors, those tastes, those environments that you've been in. Um, but then, like Aaron said, you know, I'll find myself going to the, the pantry and pulling out just random spices. I mean, because there's, there's been times that I've, I've picked up, uh, like, rosemary or something in, in a random bourbon that you don't get in other stuff by just hitting the spice cabinet. Um, so it's just, it's it's unfortunately or fortunately drinking a lot um <laughs> and you know just just doing those things referencing life experiences there's nothing worse though than when you get that like i know this flavor yeah i've had it somewhere 
and then you just you're stuck jogging the memory forever. Like, yeah, what was it? Like, you oh know, yeah, you just oh there's thinking, there's thinking and there's absolutely stuff that still to this day jumps out at me in in certain whiskeys that I'm like I should know what this is. I, I taste it. <laughs> I cannot figure out what it is. And but, I'm 100 percent with that. You know, when we do our podcast and I listen to what Seth says, I realize you know we always taste and drink what we're you know the podcast is about as we're doing it so you know when he's given you know, his notes i'm tasting and i'm yeah. smelling i'm like oh man i totally missed that or that's what i was missing or that's what yeah. i couldn't think of you know it's just uh so that's how you know everything just evolves yeah it's it, the exact same for me there, there's stuff that he'll mention that, that, that the exact same one of the things that I like that you do, and, and I like this conversation because a lot of people that reach out to us are saying, hey, I'm just getting in. I don't get the tasting notes that you guys get. And Zeke and I always say, you know, hey, we're not even as advanced as other people we know, but the best advice we can tell you is taste, write it down, write what yeah. you know. If you think it's bubble gum and, and mm-hmm. you, you know, but try to get more specific as you go. So if you think it's bigly, chew opposed yeah. to a bubblicious write that yeah. right and that's going to start well, trading on, on that comment right there there was a blanton's that we did with jeremy shell yeah ranked that, 86 bubble gum. That, yeah, yeah bubble gum. i mean it took me back to the old tops wax packs yeah that had bubble gum in them i mean that was some of the most stale bubble gum that you could ever have <laughs> but that's what it made me think of it was that life experience that you that you look for the thing that you guys do and you always mention it is like, I have this notebook here. Everything we have, I write down mm-hmm. what we've tasted, even if it's just jot, jotting down quick notes on something we've tasted in a night. And you always talk about how you go back and revisit it months later because your palate changes. You, you might have different experiences. You might be in a different environment. And it's, you know, keep tasting it. Taste mm-hmm. something. Yeah. See if that holds up over time. Has air changed the bottle? Has your palate changed? It's all stuff you guys look for. Right? Yeah. That's always, that's the, the best thing about bourbon is, you know, you open a bottle, you taste it, you write down some notes, you revisit it in a month or two, and it's completely different. And you're like, oh my gosh, these notes are, you know, nothing like what I wrote two months ago. And it's, right. you know, that's the fun thing about bourbon because it's not going to go bad. So it's just try it over time and just let it, let it open up with air and see where it takes you. I, and I, I don't think there's really any right or wrong answer to, to what the flavor is. I mean, because Aaron and I have pretty similar palates. Um, but, you know, what... That's good for your podcast, because we don't. <laughs> <laughs> John's is broken. <laughs> I think he would probably argue that point. But, um, but no, I mean, like, what you guys pick up it could be totally different because of those life experiences. Because of, you know, the, the nutmeg that you have in your pantry is different than the nutmeg I have in mine. Um, but I, I, don't, I really don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I mean, there's, there's standard stuff that you're going to pick up in most bourbons. Once you get into the subtleties, I, it's, it's what, you, what you get out of it. Yeah, and the olfactory stuff to me, that, that's some of the funniest. Like you, you mentioned the gum. Like, yeah. It's funny how we do it. We all as kids, you know, we had our favorite ones, and yeah. you so and so had this one, so and that one. But you tried them all, and you're like, no, no, this is this isn't that gum. Yeah, it, it's that one. Or, yeah, uh, yeah, that flavor. It's not the upper deck; it's the tops. So yeah, yeah. The, the, well, because Zeke, as similar as they were, they were yeah. all like a, a sliver yeah, different. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, no. Well, Zeke, what was it? A few weeks ago, you mentioned bubble tape. Yeah, I couldn't remember what it was, but that's what it was. It was, it was like bubble a, tape. Zeke was like, I swear this is like a bubble gum, and it looked like it was in a tape dispenser, and something was like <laughs> be bubble tape. It was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's funny what you, you, you think back yeah. of. Like, yeah. How do I remember a subtle difference 20, 30 years ago? Mm-hmm. Something insignificant is, oh, this is what so-and-so's couch smelled like or tasted like. like yeah. Grandma that I saw three times or, you know, some random something. You know, I wasn't trying to give you crap with that. It's, oh, no. it's when, you know, when you get that note and that's what I was doing a bad job at explaining what Zeke did, but... If you get that note and you're like, it's it's a gum, it's in a tape, like it looks like it's in a tape dispenser, I don't know what it is. If you're making notes at home, write that down because yeah. bubble tape is going to come to you eventually, yeah. right? Like yeah. write whatever you think it is 
in whatever words make the most sense to you, and then eventually you know go raid the spice cabinet. Yeah, and uh, what? That's a cheaper way of doing it. Isn't there something you could buy for like 200 bucks that's every spice? There is. Now? Yeah. There is. But you know what? I, I'm going to call out um, a friend of mine in the uh, Atlanta Bourbon Society. He he actually made his own nosing kit. Just going to the store, there's a, there's a, a grocery store, a farmer's market by us, where you can buy herbs or spices or grains or whatever in large bags or small bags, whatever size, whatever size you need. And he went and did that and created his own nosing kit for like less than 20 bucks. I need to do that. Like I said, you have the, the, the usual suspects. You have the, the caramels and you know the leather and black pepper and cinnamon and allspice and things like that. But then you can start branching out. I can't remember what all he put in his. Uh, I don't need those in my kit because I just say they're in every bourbon to sound yeah, smart. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. They, for the most part, they, they are. I get, I get <laughs> vanilla and uh, leather, a little slight caramel. Uh, it's smooth. It burns a little bit on the the finish. There we go. There's some, it is. There's some smoke in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this yeah, one's that, a little oaky. <laughs> yeah. So that that guy is uh, it, it's Chris Walter. So if anybody listening knows him, hit him up and he can tell you exactly what all he has in the kit. Well, Chris, if you're listening because you were wondering where Seth was and, and <laughs> we found him here. Uh, He's actually been to Zeke's house to hang out with us. Feel free to message me and let me know what's in your kit. You probably got to check that guest book more often. <laughs> Jeremy, what, what do you think? Do you agree? I will have to say that I'm more in your guys' line of tasting. I have, uh, I, I don't have quite the refined palate that Aaron and Seth have. I'm more of, well, I get the vanilla, I get the, I get the caramels, and there's some rye spice, and I can kind of pick out a few things, but I'm not going to be like, Oh, I got cherry, and there's star of anise, and oh, I, there's some dried up tangerine from Nicaragua that, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that they somehow know that I've never even heard of. Got oh, that sort of I don't know. Hold on, what was that you word? Joke, but there oh. is Chinese cinnamon in my pantry, so that might be thrown in uh, to this uh, my my tasting notes. So here, those ones so. where I hit pause and like Google, what does this mean? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Zeke, Zeke has always texted me after we do a Firewater review because he learned something new and he's looking it up. Like, <laughs> I, I I hadn't heard this. He's like, what is that before. herb that he just talked about? <laughs> is is Aaron ta- taste talking in tongues? Yeah. Did, he say, did he say anus or anus? I don't know. <laughs> it's always baffling. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I, I I I'm not quite the uh, whiskey sommelier. I guess would be the the more accurate term for it, as they are. Um, but I do like Seth's idea of a lot of times what you're tasting is, is what you've experienced in life. Like he was talking about leather and baseball. And I remember playing little league and you're always chewing on your glove or something. So I remember those experiences and then some of those revisit when you're, when you're tasting things. Yeah. Um, so it, it, I, it, it's kind of a, a mix between both what they were saying, but yeah. I'm so more, you're more of an experienced mouthfeel. Yes. Yeah. How, how's it? How's a whiskey actually uh, go down? Yeah. Rather than yeah, you know, I, get the nuance. It's it's I I can be like oh well, that was that's got good legs. It's it's got an oily mouthfeel. It's got a, a decent finish. Like it's long or it's medium. And but I'm not going to be like well there was the I had. Eight different notes for the the beginning of it, and then in the middle there was, oh, I got three more different things, and in the finish they've got all these. I I, I just baffle myself when I listen to their shows because I'm like, how, how did how did you get all of that in one drink? Who doesn't love a good set of legs? <laughs> She's got legs. She knows how to use so them. I, I will say though, like if you're if you're really getting into it and you want to try to to start pinpointing stuff, set aside time for it. Because if you're out at a party and you're, I mean, like in this atmosphere, it's a little bit different because we're, that's what we're doing tonight. But if I'm out, you know, at a bar drinking with friends or not that I do that a lot anymore, but um, you know what I mean? If you, you know, somebody's backyard at a party, I'm not jotting down tasting notes. Set aside time. A lot of times if I really want to dive into a whiskey, I will go down in my office, in my basement after everybody's gone to bed. The house is completely quiet, 
there's there's no you know no smells from the kitchen from where we've been cooking nothing like that i'm alone in the basement with my bourbon taking notes yeah i'm i'm the same way with you know running the problem of art when do i find that time like i'm, yeah, I'm literally yeah, over well, 100 samples now yeah. random stuff to like i just want to give it, it its due yeah. diligence and focus on it but i don't know when that's going to be so I, I will say your attic in this like, house is great for yeah. that it's uh, <laughs> I get to it gets real like, quiet up there. <laughs> it's like, did you try the sample yet? It's like, no, like I haven't had an hour where yeah. I can just zone out and, and really dive into it. And it's a random rare something, you know, like shit. Yeah, it's funny you guys should mention that because one thing that still kills me to this day is all of the Four Roses limited edition small batches. I've had all of them at one point except for 2015. And I was in Las Vegas, and I was at a bar in Las Vegas, and I said, I've never had the 2015. I really want to have it. And I just wasn't in an environment. You know, I sipped yeah. it, and I'm like, it's good. Yeah. And I can say I've had it, but I don't have the notes. Like, I didn't yeah. have the time to you really sit there. Really enjoy it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed it at the time, but it wasn't like a sip take a little notes, mm -hmm. sip, take a little notes and like kind of be able to reflect on how that compares to the other one. So there are people that say 2015 is one of their favorites. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I was playing craps. But it was good. <laughs> Speaking of things that people are going to talk about after, uh, for, for those of you that might be living under a rock, Buffalo Trace pulled a fast one on us. And what they did was they put something on their website for a very long time that said, if you could make your perfect bourbon, what would it be? And we've talked about this before. A lot of people went on that website just thinking it was a fun game. They messed things around. But in this era of big data, they basically took everything that people put in and then they said, we are going to put out this Weller CYPB, which is Craft Your Perfect Bourbon. That is what CYPB stands for, despite the post that we might have on Instagram <laughs> in which people are putting in their own version of the acronym. You're pushing 200 comments on that one, by the way. I know. Can you believe it? And we aren't even... I have one good idea a month. <laughs> came, in, came in on the next to last day. I'm not going to lie. Our best posts that have ever been on Instagram... Uh, one was when I posted yeah. the uh, Colonel Taylor box, and the other was Zeke posting CYPB. But this is a 95 proof bourbon. It is 47.5 ABV. The age on this one. It's, it's got eight. eight. What? It's got eight on there. Yeah, it's an eight year age stated bourbon. So basically, when everybody put in the data, Buffalo Trace took that away and said, the ideal bourbon is going to be eight years old. It's going to be a weeder. It's going to be 95 proof. And that's what everybody thinks. Now, I don't necessarily think this is the perfect bourbon for me. But what do you got? I mean, what do you think about that? The fact that, that well, I mean, the survey wasn't done far enough back where it's like, they came up with its own mash or laid them in a certain area. But it's, people didn't even know they were doing oh, a survey. But it's still very retrospective yeah. to say, well, guess what? Based on what you said, oh, wow, we happened to we find these to barrels. Find these yeah. random barrels. You, I don't you know how they got in that corner that we'd forgotten about in this you know area of the rick. But what do you know? We tasted them. And it's just like what yeah. you said you wanted. Eight years goes by quick. I'll be you know? damned. I mean, it's it's the perfect marriage of digital marketing with them doing a survey and people not knowing they were doing a survey and then pulling in the data and saying, oh, here. Because I know I've done a few of those where I was just like, I wonder what happens when I do this. Like, what's yeah. it going to tell me? I didn't think it was actually my perfect bourbon because... There's no way my perfect bourbon is under 110 proof. Yeah. Well, and th that brings me to this question. What was everyone, if you remember, what was everyone's perfect bourbon doing that? I know what mine was. I did it three different times, and all three times, I mean, of course, you go through it three times, but I wanted to see if, you know, the, the questions changed at all. I got Elmer T. Lee all three times. 
I felt like wherever they're, you know, they're marked. Zeke got out more too late, too. No, wah, wah, wah. same as you though. I feel like where the markers were, it, it was definitely set up to steer you. So sure, I mean, yeah. it, it, it herded the cattle, so to speak. I mean, yeah. if you were anywhere in, in left field of, of this vicinity, yeah, all right, that's what this person's going to get. Congratulations, you, know, you got ancient age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but well, I, I think <laughs> I think the one problem with the whole concept is what Seth just said. He did it three times. Yeah. I mean, there's people that I've heard of that did it every day for however however long they had it open. I don't remember how long the exact date was, but then, I mean, they could have done it 20, 30 times. So you're kind of skewing your 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 idea with people that yeah. are just massively doing it yeah. constantly, and it so I mean, it kind of skews whatever whatever the outcomes could be. Yeah. Well, or inversely. Did they know where this was going to end up to begin right. with? Right. And I don't That's know true. that... Yeah. I mean, I didn't. I'll readily admit I mean, that. If, I mean, I feel like if any of us were going to say, all right, Buffalo Trace is going to pick one of their products to have something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be created by people's palates and what they go for. I mean, it had to be Weller. Yeah. Like, how many stores have we all been in, you know, shooting breeze with you know, the owner or whoever, and like, passerbys? Yeah, hey, Weller? Yeah. Door shuts. Mm-hmm. Danny Willer, door shuts again. Yeah, I mean, you don't it's hear better it. than got me, Pappy. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. well, that's, that's that's the world we've come to now. Is right. is they don't even worry about the Pappy anymore. It's the Weller. <laughs> but I just feel like knowing that, like, I won't discredit them, but they knew what they were. People doing. get paid a lot of money to be in marketing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> Absolutely. We thought about doing this firewater style, but in true dad's drinking bourbon fashion. We said the only way to solve this and and what we think about it is to put it in a blind. So I blinded all of you. So all four of you had the same blind tasting. Zeke blinded me. I will tell you right now. Let's just get through this. I'm going to, I'm going to read the results and then we'll talk about rankings and what we thought about this uh, moving forward. I will tell you right now that Jeremy got his blind right. Aaron got his blind right. Zeke got his blind right with two exceptions out of the four. Um, he no, I mean, I'm not. Is math hard? Fifty percent. Fifty percent. He got fifty percent right. He swapped the well, our special reserve and the OWA. Say the way you tried to present that result was, was hard. <laughs> I was just trying to. I was. I, I feel like I had been harsh on Zeke earlier. In no, I'm the talking podcast. about the way he presented it to you. Oh, it was yeah. hard. <laughs> now you know what I deal with every day. <laughs> I thought it was simple as could be. I'm like, the same thing he said, but I flipped one and four. But that was not. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the same thing, flipping one and four. It I was think I drooled a little bit after you said that. Like, I. Okay. That's where I, I blame John's Kentucky education. Seth <laughs> screwed the pooch. The only thing Seth got right was OWA. Pretty much. Which, you know, if you're going to get one right, getting OWA right yeah. is the right way to go. Yeah. He said they were all Willers. <laughs> you got a point. They're all fruit. <laughs> They're all fruit. One's a banana, one's an orange, <laughs> one's an apple. Um, now, I... Zeke blinded me. I happened to get all mine right. That That's whatever. So let's talk about the different nuances and, and let's talk about, do, do you guys, you didn't at the time, do you have rankings for what you thought for all of these? You go ahead, Aaron Cage. Yeah, uh, so my ranking, my number one was uh, number four, which was OWA, and then I picked as my number two the actually, the uh, CYPB, and then Weller 12 was my number three, and then the Special Reserve was my number four. Um, Seth, what about you? We'll, we'll just give straight rankings, and then we'll talk about you know the nuances between them after. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean the, the the rankings are based on what they actually are. So, uh, first I had OWA, uh, second I had what ended up being CYPB, uh, third I had uh, what is that special reserve actually, and last I had twelve. Now, Jeremy, I think you were saying you had that same result, right? I had the same result as Aaron. Um, it may just come from we drink so much bourbon together. We kind of have a, a similar palate. 
but I had the 107 as number one, the CYPVD is two, Weller 12 is three, and Special Reserve as four. Now, Seth, I had, you guys don't know this listening, I'm actually going counterclockwise around the table. So I'm next. I had the same ranking as Seth. I had OWA, CYPB, WSR, and then what were 12. Zeke, what do you have? Man, I I went full tater on this one. Um, I thought CYPB was honestly the best out of this line. Um, my second one was Special Reserve, third was OWA, and fourth was Weller 12. Another thing I want to make sure that we point out is that this was complete no store picks. This was exactly what was off the shelf we have plenty of owas on this table <laughs> and if you if you guys have looked at instagram uh, and you've looked at either our account or Seth's account or aaron's account i mean we have plenty of stuff that that's on the table we do have really really good weller picks all of these are straight no store pick right off the shelf zeke i'm i'm a little surprised honestly this CYPB, it, it was just the easiest drinker. There was just no nothing off put it about it. Um, Talk I, about that. For, let's just go right into it. Tell us your notes on the CYPB. Sure, it was a uh, nose really sweet, slight alcohol palate. I thought it was sweet and thin, um, and just a a hint of age toward the back. Um, second with the the special reserve. Oh, don't even don't oh. even just CYPB. Okay. So, what do, you, what do you think of the CYPB? I'm going counterclockwise uh, so again. So, are we, are we doing nose palate or just, just straight palate? Nose, nose taste finish. Okay, so for the nose on the CYP, I got a little bit of honey and um, some nice uh, cinnamon, a little bit of raisin, got uh, caramel and some light brown sugar. It was really kind of a sweet nose for me. And uh, on the palate, it was real sweet. A lot of caramel, brown sugar, got some sweet cherries. And what really stood out was almost like a buttercream. The finish, it was just a medium finish. Nothing crazy about it. Just uh, some cinnamon, spice, and uh, just light vanilla. I didn't really get any oak in that, though. It was almost all just sweet. Yeah. What did you get on that, Mr. Brown? Uh, so I'm going to preface all of this, that before I even tasted any of the four that we had, I wrote down what I thought each of them were based on the nose alone. Which is something Zeke would do. I mean, no, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not even saying yeah. I'm not even saying that yeah. as a joking thing, because he actually is really good in determining what things are just off a of nose. Yes. Yeah. But the funny thing is though, so I, I wrote down I think that it's this on each of the four. But then if you go back and look at the actual notes if I had gone back and revisited what I wrote for him, I probably would have nailed every one of them. That's I've done that's that. where John so beats me every time. I'm like, huh, smelled alcohol. Probably was the higher proofer. Why did you not pick the higher proofer? <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, the, the, the CYPB was uh, super creamy for me. Uh, a lot of caramel. I got some real light, fine leather on it. Uh, some nutmeg. The, the actual palate of it was really well balanced. Uh, I got some cream corn. Uh, some nice cinnamon, black pepper on the spice. Uh, the finish, I kind of wanted it to be a little bit longer. All of these, except for the OWA, the, the finish, there's got to be more there for me on those. Yeah, and and I got that on the CYPB as well. Jeremy, what about you? Uh, I'll simplify mine a little bit because I don't, like I said earlier, I don't have quite the palate that Aaron and Seth have. Uh, I got a, it was a very sweet forward. I got a lot of caramel, uh, vanillas. Um, I picked up some some of the baking spices, like they were talking about cinnamon, nutmeg, and then like both Aaron and Seth said, it was a, kind of a medium finish. It kind of fell off a little bit. Um, I'd have liked it to last a little longer, uh, but that's kind of it, it. Just kind of fell a little short there. And just to kind of go through the nuances, what I thought was a little bit different. You guys have just mentioned sweet. Some people have mentioned buttercream. For me, it was like sweet vanilla ice cream on the taste. Yeah. Uh, right with you, I got you know vanilla, slight spice, cherries on the nose, but that taste was just sweet vanilla ice cream with baking spices, like drizzled on top of caramel. 
um, or drizzled with caramel on top. And it's funny, Seth, you had mentioned something and I'm, I'm really not trying to agree with you on things. It was a nice even burn yeah. opposed to the other ones. And, and I would just say some of them are really thin. Some of them are really, you know, overpowering. It was just a nice even burn. It didn't hug you too much. It didn't hug you too little, but it wasn't long enough. That's what I thought about that one. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to go clockwise. Weller 12. So what did you get, Jeremy, for Weller 12? So Weller 12 to me, it, it's kind of a similar, I think, flavor profile to uh, the CYPD. It's, it, to me, it's got a very sweet, forward finish. Um, I got a lot of vanilla, a little bit of honey. I think the baking spices that I tasted in the last one kind of fall off a little bit. And there's a little sweet cinnamon, but I, I don't get much of, of, of anything else. And then the finish is, it's it, medium to long. It's a little better than the CYD, but it still, to me, falls a little short. Seth, what do you get? Uh, so the funny thing about this is I actually flipped what ended up being Special Reserve in 12. <laughs> I thought what ended up being 12 was Special Reserve. Um, I got, it, it was really mellow for me. Very sweet forward, uh, light caramel. Uh, some mild nutmeg, mild oak on the nose. Uh, it had a lot more spice than what uh, Bourbon 1 was, which was what uh, ended up being Special Reserve. The, the palate, I got a lot of caramel, uh, light cinnamon, vanilla. Again, very sweet. Uh, but there again, I think, it, with, uh, like I said before, with the exception of Old Weller Antique, not a lot of finish. Aaron, what do you get? The 12 year, for me, it's. It's always kind of interesting because I always get a lot of dark fruits with it. On the nose, I got a lot of cherry figs and raisins and um, a little bit of cin cinnamon. The oak is definitely there. That's kind of what, when I first smelled it, I, the oak kind of hit me first. And I thought, you yeah, know, this must be the 12. But on, on the palate, you know, I still get those cherries, those raisins. But it had a nice vanilla uh, note to it, a little bit of uh, honey. The one thing I really liked about it was I picked up uh, almost like a toasted marshmallow and uh, some light apples in it. So I, uh, you know, the, the 12, I did rank it number three, but it, it, it is a very good pour and uh, the finish does lack just a little bit, but I think it, I think it still has a nice medium finish to it. Zeke Baker, what about you? Uh, the nose, I thought it was fainter than most. Uh, at first I got a whiff of oak and maybe what I thought could just be some alcohol proof. Uh, I think the oak kind of prevailed, especially as I moved toward the palate. Uh, it was just noticeable wood profile over the sweetness um, compared to the other three. It also seemed really thin to me. And then when I was kind of still on the fence and moving back through these a second or a third time uh, toward that back end and finish, it just really had a, a bitterness that none of the other ones had. So to me, I just said, that's got to be that extra age chiming in there. I'll just say the nose is muted on the 12 for me. And the it's just so much oak that I think it overpowers any of the other flavors and, and tasting notes that I might get on that. That's the one complaint I've always had with the 12 is, is there are aspects of it that are muted and aspects of it that are turned up high. So if you think about you know, a typical mixing board and you have your low, medium, and high. I, I just think they haven't got the EQ right on this one. And it's always what has turned me off on Weller 12. Going to Weller Special Reserve. Zeke, I'm going to go back to you first. What did you get on Special Reserve? I thought the nose was warm, robust. Honestly, it seemed to be very full and sweet and creamy and as I was debating a ranking system, uh, you know, I, I was torn between the OWA and the Special Reserve. Neither really wowed me on the palate, but I thought the Special Reserve had the better nose, and that was really why I went with it. Uh, yeah, it's not the taste, but uh, looking at the total package, that that was where I, I made my decision. Palate-wise for it, it seemed thin. Um, it was warm at times, kind of prickly, and, and didn't get a, a ton of flavor or sweetness out of it, but... You, it was kind of in line with other things we tasted, honestly. What did you get on it? 
Uh, so for me, Special Reserve is kind of always an interesting port for me because it's always uh, kind of light and airy. Uh, I always get uh, some almost like summer uh, fruits with it. The pear, peaches, uh, then I always get a, just a little bit of vanilla. I mean, on the, the palate, you know, I get uh, almost like honeysuckle, vanilla, uh, definitely a little bit of cinnamon, and it it's always has this just like real crushed fruit to it uh, that I, you know, I always say like pears, apples, and peaches. I can't ever really pin down because I feel like it's always ever changing when I when I try it. But um, it's, it's I ranked it four, but it is, it's a great summer pour for me. Seth, what about you? This is why I thought it was the, the CYPB, because when I went through the four, just nosing them, cherries jumped out big time on the, the special reserve for me. What is about being special reserve? So there was, on the nose, I got cherry, cinnamon, allspice, some light floral notes. Uh, it came across pretty creamy or buttery, uh, but it was really soft on the on the palate. A little bit of syrup there in it. Uh, really light black pepper and some cinnamon. I didn't get a whole lot of spice. Uh, you know, pretty calm as far as the spice goes. Uh, there again, the finish is it's all right. It's just not near as long as what I would like it to be. Jeremy, what about you? The nose was, I, I didn't pick up a lot of different things. I picked up a little vanilla, uh, a little bit of, of rye. Um, the palate to me, I, I picked up quite a bit of vanilla. There, it, it was a little thin, but um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad. And I've got written down here, low rye spice. And to, it, to me, it kind of echoes what, what uh, Seth said. With it. You get a little bit of that spice, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't overpower it. And then it had a medium finish. It kind of tailed off. Uh, basically, it's kind of just been the same the same thing. I, I would like it to just last a little longer. For me, the best way to describe this is fair to Midland, right? It's one of those things. It's, it's always going to be something that you can enjoy. It's a good, easy sipper. If you can find it, I, I would never pay more than retail for it. But it's just one of those nice, easy drinkers. Don't expect something to wow you, but it's something that's always going to get the job done. Let's go to OWA, last but not least. Jeremy, you go first on this one. So, obviously, like I rank this number one because I think it's the most well-rounded of, of the group. I think it's got a, a decent caramel and, and vanilla sweetness to it, but it's not overpowering. Um, the rye spice comes through a little bit. You get some of the baking spices. And I also tasted a little bit of a citrus flavor. I'm not sure which, I can't say which one exactly, but there was a little citrus in it. And to me, it's just the most well-rounded. It had the, the longest finish of, of the ones we tried. Um, and, and to me, that was why it was ranked number one. Yeah. Seth, what do you think? Uh, this was actually probably the one that I had the least amount of notes on, uh, just for the sheer fact that I knew exactly what it was. This was the one that was 100% right, and I knew that it was right. Um, I had uh, your typical cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, uh, some leather, oak. Um, you know, it's it, for me, it's really well balanced. You've got just enough of that caramel sweetness in there on the palate and the finish. Like uh, Jeremy said, you get a, by far and away, it's the best finish on any of the Weller line. Um, I just love that spice in there, that, that cinnamon pulls through all the way through, very consistent. Um, hands down, for me, this is the best of the Weller line. Aaron, what about you? I just wrote down good. Moment. <laughs> what Seth said. <laughs> Zeke, uh, let's let's not make him talk too much. Zeke, what do you think about this one? Um, nose wise, I put it it seemed to me just like a heavy alcohol vapor with some sweetness behind it. Um granted it's not that high proof, but I guess maybe in this line it just stood out even more, but uh it just it was a punch of alcohol vapor to me. Uh, palette it, first it hit really sweet and then it uh you know it turned into somewhere of the cinnamon the singe the proof kicked in a little bit and it wasn't overwhelming uh, but it 
after having some other ones that were just such a sweet, easy pour, uh, I guess it just jumped at the palate more than I expected or, or, or wanted it at the time. And I don't know. It was somewhat off putting. It was off putting? I mean, honestly, I've, I've had OWA plenty of times where it just like, give me something else. I, I don't get excited about it. I don't have the, the fervor. What I like, I like about this one the most is that it's the most complex of the Weller line. It's going to be the spiciest. It's going to be have oak. It's going to have leather. It's going to have fruit. It's going to have different tasting notes. It's the one that is going to move with you the most. I like the, the hug and the warmth. I like the 107 proof. It's the best finish that I get out of all of these and the one that really kind of is inviting and makes you want to come back. I think that's the best part of it for me is that it's the complexity. And you know, that's something that we always look for is what's going to be something that we can have a conversation about, especially because it's the one that you'll actually get picks from out of that line. Although I have seen some special reserve picks here and there. OWA is the one that you're actually going to get picks from. Um, but to me, it, I just like the complexity. So long story short, end of the day, we've now had CYPB. We've ranked it against everything else that is in the Weller line. We know that it is 40 to $45 retail. I'm just going to go around the room. Give me a yes, no. Would you buy it? Jeremy. Yes. So, at, at retail, absolutely, yes. Yes, I'd buy it at retail. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I owe you for half of it. <laughs> I'll put it on your tab. So Interest daily. For, and, and the thing, though, that I do want to bring up is you know, this had been going in secondary for $400. By no means do I think this is worth $400. There's no way that I think it is four times what a secondary value of an OWA pick is. You know, I mean, I would, I would easily say it's in, it's in perspective. You know, like plenty of other tastings we've done, just because you rank something number one, that doesn't put it in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, to, to step back and have kind of a 360 view. Yes, it was good in this realm. But when you really think of everything else that's, I mean, shit, on this table in front of us, yeah, oh my god, on, on shelves and in stores you walk in every day, um, I, I think there, there's plenty of more options out there, and at least funny to me. So I wrote this note down. I just wonder, especially in the bigger the brand, how many more barrels get lost or overlooked? If you consider ages on this, I mean, Special Reserve seven year. Even all the OWA picks lately have not been more than seven years. Yeah. This is eight, but then the weather 12, you know, obviously it didn't fare too well amongst any of us. I, I don't think age matters. So is it, you to, know, to an extent, is it where they're sitting, <laughs> other factors, but, but how, how many really amazing barrels are just, you know, somewhat, oh, nobody ever tasted that one. It just yeah. sat there, we, we threw it in a batch, and mm -hmm. there it went. Yeah. When you think about those those Rick houses, they have how many barrels in them? Oh yeah, they're not tasting those every day. No. They're not tasting them every month or every year. I Some are never tasted at all. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just think for that to be where it is with only the one more year of aging, and even the proof being lower. I mean, yeah. And unless there's something to do with the the water and, and some ratio to the the mash of that, you know, once you dilute it, it comes off really sweet. Yeah. I mean, Carrie Underwood did say there must be something with the water. And we are a podcast that is in Nashville. I've never heard that song, John. Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with Carrie. Carrie and Miranda. Just I'm saying. Be, I'm better with Carrie. Yeah. yeah. If I had to pick between them. I like Miranda because she sounds like she's going to kick your ass. You know, like gunpowder and lead is such... I mean, it's the riff. It's the guitar riff in that song, too, but... Yeah. Oh, Carrie was like didn't walking out like, of the bar, beating people up. Didn't, with baseball she, didn't she have something yeah. about keying your car? Or yeah, your that was Carrie. Well, so <laughs> so Miranda had a song saying she was going to shoot you, and then Carrie had a song saying she was going to beat up your car. That, that's a slower death. I think right yeah. now I just stay I'm away from both of them. Death. I think it'd be fun to see if you could sit at the table and, and, and drink with Miranda. I got a feeling half of us would. I think we it would probably, be fun to we'll tap drink, out first. She'd probably drink us under the table. Tonight it would be fun to sit at the table and drink with us. Yeah. <laughs> How many bottles do we have here, you think? At least eight per person. Too many that we haven't 
had a chance to try. No, that's true. But you know you what? I, I want to back up just a little bit because we were talking about secondary prices. Um, I think if the Weller store picks are going for roughly a hundred on secondary, based on my rankings alone, not that that's worth any weight at all. I would think if you put a secondary price on the uh, CYPD, I would say seventy eighty. If I think you, that's fair. If, if you put if you put a secondary price on it, I think that's fair. I, I think I, you're I, looking at what double double retail basically at the, at yeah, the most. Yeah, and I, I think Zeke said it best to me when he because he picked up the bottle before I did, um, or before I he shared it with me. But he picked up a bottle that was for both of us, and he said it's a sweeter honey barrel WSR. Is the yeah, best yeah. way that he describes it. I, 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 I said it was sweeter and more refined WSR. Like this, I, I, this I is think the clean that version. Is a good, a good yeah. explanation for it. Yeah, I would agree with that. But I think the the worst fallout, I guess, um, from from this is anyone that's you know starting to dabble or get into bourbon. Yeah. What would be better to pour them than that? I think. I mean, maybe yeah. not the best in the world, but yeah. it, it's not going to turn anyone away for sure. Like you talked about, you know, first time you had Booker's. And, yeah. Same here. I was like, "Who? Why do people buy this? Yeah. Somebody will dress this bottle." But like yeah. every time somebody asks me, like, "What? What do you? What do you pour for a novice? Somebody that's their first time?" And I always tell them Buffalo Trace because it's it, it's an easy drinker. It's not a real high proof, but this would be something that maybe the follow up to that. Like I, I, now, obviously, this is gonna probably go crazy. Like you're saying, there's secondary for four hundred, but if if it ever becomes readily available. Like, that may be the follow-up to, like, a Buffalo Trace or something. Like, okay, now you can try maybe this. This is the next step up from that. Yeah, or even maybe, um, all right, so you've had this with ice. Do you, you yeah. want to try your, your feet at being neat? Neat, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah that, that too. That, yeah, that's a yeah. good point. And then, you know, sadly, I don't I don't think it, it's going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think it, it, they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. They wanted to try to appeal to the masses. That's where the whole survey came into play. Whether they took that data into account or not, who knows? I, I'm kind of doubting they really took that into account. Now they know I like Elmer T. Lee, but you know <laughs> they have that information. But I think they know a, everybody there's likes a very Elmer. Specific, <laughs> there's a very specific dartboard <laughs> in the yeah, lab that yeah, they just yeah. throw darts at, it, and wherever those three land, that's what yeah. happens. But I mean, I think <laughs> these this line with perhaps the exception of, of OWA, could appeal to the masses, to, to the novice drinker, people just getting into it, wanting to try stuff neat. I, I mean, I think they've nailed it with that. It's personally for me, it's not for me, with the exception of OWA. But again, that I don't know that that's worth much weight. Even, even then, it's, I mean, OWA is good, but I, I don't look for it. I don't jump for it. Somebody... Yeah. Oh, I'll jump for a good pick. I mean, if somebody says, the owner says, I've got a bottle, I'm like, yeah. no, man, like, somebody else is going to mean more to you. You're going to get a better relationship out of it. Yeah. Like, I appreciate you offering it, but there's something else I want. Yeah. You know, like, I guess, you know, lastly, when you look at people that, you know, continually hound stores, got any Weller? Got any Weller? How many years have you been saying you got any Weller? Expand, and how much it, do you have in your bunker that it, you're still your horizon? Because you're yeah. missing out on 99% of. Mm-hmm. Equally as good, if not better, bourbon. I'd probably side with better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Guys, this has been a hell of a time. And I just want to thank you so much for coming to visit. I hope it's not the only time that that you do this. I hope we get to do this again. There's going to be some stuff that is coming up soon for you guys, right? Uh, you just picked a, a barrel of MB Roland and you actually... Pick two barrels. Two barrels. I was say, not one, but, but two. two. And I'm sorry if the banging on the table was me because I was. No, so you're so excited. So excited. Yeah. And you just can't hide but it. I, yeah. I can't. <laughs> and I, I just want to sing now. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's definitely coming up. We picked two today. We got a bourbon and a rye. We picked one of. We were talking on the way back from the pick. We think there's only been a handful of. 53 gallon barrel picks that have come out of MB Rowland. And so we had three. So yeah, were three. we the third? Or I we think we were the third. third. Okay. Well, I think we talked about because 
Cork and Bottle was one, and then they talked about they just released uh, another one a couple weeks ago, so that you guys would be three. Okay. And I think we're the very first the rye. The very first rye. Very first rye. So if you want, you hear the talk of Peerless, this is all in my uh, personal opinion. If you want a rye that rivals Peerless for half the price, absolutely check out MB Rolling Rye. Yeah. And we picked the very first rye barrel from them today. And it's 45 minutes to an hour away from Nashville, so not bad if you're in this area to go check them out. Speaking of checking people out, check out the Firewater Review at Firewater Review on Instagram. You can find them on your favorite podcast provider, Apple, Google Play, Stitcher, same places that you can find us, all the big providers. They will be podcasting again. You will hear Firewater Review again, but they have some old episodes that are still good. You can find Seth on Instagram at Seth P. Brown. You can find Aaron on Instagram at bourbon.cave. You can find Jeremy on Instagram. It's jeremy.a.cave, right? Correct. You can find us on Instagram at Dad Shrinking Bourbon. You can find us on Twitter at Bourbon Dads. You can find us on Facebook at Dad Shrinking Bourbon. And your favorite podcast provider, please leave us a five star review. Tell us why you like us. If you don't like us, reach out to us. Tell us why before you leave a review. We want to hear from you. We want to get better. We definitely thank you guys for listening tonight. Jeremy, Seth, Aaron, anything you guys want to say before we close out? I uh, appreciate you guys having us. Yeah, thanks. Awesome time. Thanks for letting us stay here or yeah, without you knowing. For, thanks for putting <laughs> <laughs> in your Thanks attic. for putting us up for the last six months. Yeah. <laughs> nice sabbatical. <laughs> We're Zeke, back. Zeke, you got to get better security. Yeah. <laughs> we got to have a talk with some people. <laughs> all right, we'll see you all next week. Cheers. Ciao.